Hello. In case you don't know me, I'm Dennis Rogers with Rogers and Kirby in Phoenix, Arizona. I recently attended the American Institute of CPAs Tax Planning Strategies for High Income Individuals Conference, and I thought you might benefit from some of the highlights of the conference without having to spend two and a half days going through highly technical information. Of course, there is the downside that you don't get to spend three days in a room full of accountants. First, let's take a look at the IRS's focus that they recently announced in their strategic plan for 2009 through 2013. One issue that they're looking at very carefully is employment tax issues. If you have a business, it's very important that you take a look at your employee versus independent contractor issues and how you treat those in your business. A second issue is that they're focusing on is enforcement of practitioners. Now this might not seem to have an impact on you directly, however, there will be increased pressure on your tax preparer to comply strictly with the rules and that may impact how you work together. Very, very important issue is foreign source income. IRS has a very a special project that, they're, that they are focusing on related to this. If you have a bank account or a brokerage account that is foreign in it with a foreign bank or brokerage firm, uh, it's very important that you disclose that and handle it exactly the way you're supposed to handle it. Uh, they are going to, to be going after very heavy penalties, even in case, some cases criminal prosecution for failure to comply with these rules. Mortgage interest deduction limitations is another area that they're focusing on. There, there's been some abuse in that area. Uh, so if you have a very high balanced mortgage, that's one you want to take a look at. Finally, there's the issue of charitable contributions. The IRS is focusing heavily on making sure that charities have printed on their statements that you received no benefit from the contributions that you made. So if, you're, if your charity did not print that, then your deduction will be disallowed if you get audited. So it's important to make them give you a statement that has that on it. Now let's take a look at some of the expected changes coming up for 2010 and 2011. First, we're quite sure we're going to see higher marginal tax rates, as high as 44% for high income individuals. That is when you take into effect some of the hidden taxes that affect uh, taxpayers. Also, we're going to see a higher cap long-term capital gains tax rate going from the current 15 percent maximum to probably 20 percent maximum. A planning opportunity here would be to consider recognizing any capital gains that you may have in your portfolio early and pay the 15 percent rate rather than waiting until the higher tax rate comes into play. Also, it might make sense to recognize some ordinary income at the lower marginal rates as well. However, make sure you're looking at your tax brackets very carefully and planning effectively for that. It looks like we're going to have some good news in terms of alternative minimum tax. There's going to be some patchwork done to fix some of the problems that have been, been hurting people for the past several years. There also are some planning opportunities for those who have, have, go, have gone through or are going through some type of debt restructuring, debt forgiveness, and even foreclosures. There's a big planning opportunity related to Roth IRAs. Under the old rules, you could not convert a traditional IRA to a Roth IRA if your modified adjusted gross income exceeded $100,000. That rule has been suspended for 2010 only. Also, the tax impact of converting is spread over two years for 2010. This presents an especially big opportunity for anyone who has carry forward tax attributes like net operating losses, charitable deductions that they could not deduct in previous years, anything that, that where you would pay less tax by including the income in, in the 2010 year. It also, though, does present opportunities for looking at tax brackets and determining if and how much you should convert in 2010. In essence, we have a 21 and a half month free look on that strategy because you could convert your IRA to a Roth in January of 2010. And then if you extend your tax return for that year, you have until October 15th of 2011 to decide whether it was a good idea or not. So for example, if the Roth IRA went down in value instead of up, you could convert it, you could recharacterize it back to an IRA and continue moving forward. 
if it went up in value, then you'd benefit by having a Roth, and you would keep it in a Roth. You can even take that one step further and open several Roths, say one for each asset class. So you'd have a large company Roth US, you'd have a large company international Roth, you'd have a small company Roth, maybe a bond fund Roth, and then you could look at each of those asset classes and whichever ones went up, you could keep in the Roth, and the ones that stayed the same or went down, you could recharacterize back to IRAs. And if you qualify in a future year, you could look at converting those again. So some real, op real planning opportunities related to how we can use Roths. There are several changes on the horizon related to estate planning. First, it seems highly likely that we're going to have a $3.5 million estate planning exemption. There also, it also is possible that they may eliminate the current use it or lose it exemption so that in effect a couple, a married couple, would have a $7 million exemption which would eliminate estate taxes for most people. It also seems likely we're going to have unification of the gift tax exemption with the estate tax exemption. Currently the gift tax exemption is only $1 million. This would allow there to be more opportunities for giving and planning during lifetime rather than waiting for it all to, be, to pass at, at death. The generation skipping transfer tax exemption now also tracks with the estate tax exemption. This gives us an opportunity to do more giving to grandchildren uh, within our uh, estate planning as well. It is very important that you have your documents reviewed in light of the many changes that have been made in the estate planning laws the past few years and the many changes that we're expecting to see here in the next few years. It is highly likely that the documents that you had prepared will create unintended consequences for your estate, especially if your gifting is formula driven, as most are. Finally, some issues related to closely held businesses. If you own an S corporation that was previously converted from a C corporation and you are in years 8 through 10 of the waiting period, you're off the hook. The rules have been temporarily changed to limit it only to a seven year waiting period. If you purchase a ongoing business and some of the purchase price was allocated toward goodwill, you now have the ability to amortize that goodwill. And possibly a new law on the horizon for S corporations that are service oriented businesses, they're attempting to take away the exemption from self-employment tax on the earnings. So that could mean an increase in your Social Security taxes. I hope you found this information helpful. If anything caught your attention and you'd like to have some time to discuss your specific situation, please give us a call and we can arrange to work with you. Thank you very much.